Hello everybody, it's Ginger on Wheels here again. Thanks for stopping by the channel where we get to test and review the latest electrically wheeled gadgets. As you can see, today I'm out on the VSET 10 Plus, which yes, it is still my favorite scooter. But it's been a few hundred miles now and I want to talk about some things that you can do for this scooter that make it a whole new ride once you get used to it. So let's roll the intro and I'll tell you what I've got going on here. I was really busy all day during the day today, so we're just going to be riding around in the evening time. There's going to be a lot more cars, so hopefully it's not too stressful. But anyway, we're riding around on the VSET 10 Plus. I guess I'm clocking 42 miles an hour. Looks like sport mode at full charge, we're at 46 miles per hour. Hey, thanks VSET. Don't go. Okay. All right, so let's pretend that you own a VSET 10 Plus scooter, just like this one. It's been a few hundred miles, you're feeling pretty used to it. You've gotten used to how it corners. You've done a little bit of off-roading. Maybe you've taken a spill or two, lost traction a couple times, and you're very familiar with the limits of the scooter. Why is my alarm going off? Racquetball, huh? Okay, well, we're not doing that. Okay, anyway, as I was saying, you got your VSET 10 Plus scooter, you're feeling pretty used to it. You're probably wondering what the best use of your money is as far as upgrades goes, right? Because there are a ton of upgrades you can do, like all sorts of custom parts for the scooter. You can get LED decks, special lights and brakes. You can upgrade to Magura brakes like some people do or tires. There's a whole plethora of upgrades. And I can tell you, there's two on this scooter that you pretty much need to get once you get used to it. The first one being PMT tires. These are official racing tires. I think they're imported from Italy. They're only made in one factory. I know that much. I got mine from a place called Wired Rides. I'll put the uh, info right on the screen now because it's spelled kind of weird. But once you get used to how the stock tires handle and you're really comfortable with the scooter, the PMT tires are definitely a great upgrade. It's really hard to notice if you just step on the scooter and start riding without having a really good uh, working knowledge of how the scooter rides without the tires. But if you know the limits of the scooter and then you put the PMTs on, it's almost like night and day. It, it just allows you that little bit of extra edge. You can corner a little bit sharper. You can stop a little bit faster. Everything's a little bit smoother. And as far as handling and, and joy of riding goes, the PMT tires are definitely up there as far as one of the upgrades that I think you need. Now the second upgrade, which I think is more or less exclusive to the VSET scooter because it's one of the only ones with swappable options, is the suspension. Unfortunately, over the 200 miles or so that I've been riding the scooter around since I've owned it, including like heavy rides in the rain, so may that might be why mine's worn down, but the suspension is worn down. It just feels kind of saggy when I stand on it there's about like a 60% standing sag so I barely have any range of motion and they just feel kind of sloppy the back ones kind of creaky they don't feel like they did when I first bought the scooter I know that much it just feels worn down and like I said I only have a couple hundred miles on it so it's a little bit depressing this still works fine sure but if you're looking to get like the optimum performance there is definitely an upgrade you can do the EXA Form 291R shock is a great upgrade shock for this scooter. I believe, don't quote me on this, I'll put the real sizes on the screen now. I think it's like 275 millimeter for front and back or 250. I'll put the sizes on the screen now for the EXA Form 291R shocks that fit on the front and back of the V-Set, but this is a great upgrade for anyone that knows their way around the scooter. The springs are a lot stiffer and it also offers you rebound adjustment. So you can adjust how fast the springs bounce back into uh, their original position, which is an even better for high speed cornering. I personally like having the 291R shocks. I had them on my Varla Eagle 1 which I believe is the same rear setup, but you can't put it on the front and back on that scooter. But on this scooter, you can put those shocks on the front and the back. And with the EXA Form 291R shock and the PMT tires, the scooter will be a lot better for anyone that knows their way around it. So in regards to how the PMT tires ride, it seems like the PMT tires have a little bit more give. So they're a little squishier. They absorb bumps a lot better. They just make the ride overall smoother. And like I said earlier, when you corner, it feels like the tires kind of squish sideways and give you extra grip. Unlike the stock tires that will just kind of like you turn the scooter as you're turning, it's called counter steering. You like tilt it left and right. 
and you can feel the stock tires. It reaches a point where the stock tires just want to drop off to the side. So you can really only go so far into a lean with the stock tires, but with the PMT tires, you can really lean into the corner. So let me show you what these PMTs look like. There's two kinds. I got one kind on my Wolf King, which I really 100% recommend, even from stock, because that really is a night and day change on the 11 inch tires. The tires on the Wolf, I should say, they're 11 inch slicks, PMT racing slicks. So they have no tread whatsoever. They're just completely bald like a baby's butt. But these PMT tires that I have on this scooter are called the PMT E-Fires and they have tread in them. So let's check these out real quick. I don't know if you can see they got all that gravel on them now. The other, the other scooter tires are a compound of nylon and rubber, which makes them a little slicker. These are pure rubber, I think, so they're extra sticky. And if you get them hot, if you ride real fast, they become even stickier. So they're even better for corners. You can see this though, this is like a water wicking design. It's a really light wicking design, so you still have a lot of tread, but I figured this would be a good option for the V-Set since I do ride this in the rain a little bit, and I would like to be able to take some sort of a corner without spinning out completely. But with the PMT racing slicks that I have on the Cabo Wolf King GT Pro, you just basically cannot ride that if the road is wet. Your tires will spin out so hard, you'll slide out when you're cornering, it's not good. So I have noticed on this V-Set scooter, Riding around in the cold, it's about 35 degrees right now. Not desirable riding temperature at all. But, you know, we needed to film. It's been a while since we did a good video. On this V-Set scooter, it drops the top speed by like six miles an hour just because it's cold out. And I've been riding around on unicycles and scooters a lot the last few days. And I can tell you, it decreases the range by like 40%. So if riding around in the cold versus riding around in the warm is no joke. There is a serious difference on top end and on range. I don't think you could pay me enough money to do another range test on this scooter. So I'm not gonna do the full range test. You just have to take my word for it. We are, however, doing range tests on the Cobble Wolf King GT Pro. I did a 30 mile range test and I did it at 27 miles per hour and I got 29 miles total range. And that was in dual motor mode. And in an upcoming video, I'm gonna be doing the exact same route, same rider, same weather, same everything, but we're gonna be doing it in single motor mode. So we can tell if single or dual is actually more efficient because that's still a standing argument in the electric scooter community today. A lot of people think that riding in single motor mode is more efficient because you're only using one motor. But the other half of people will preach that dual motor mode is more efficient because you have both motors working to help you instead of the rear motor just pushing against the resistance of the front motor. So, only time will tell. We'll be doing that range test soon, like I said. But that will be on the Wolf King GT Pro. And one other thing I've got on the scooter I want to talk about is the steering damper. Like I was saying before, you, you kind of do need the suspension upgrades and PMT tires if you know your way around the scooter and you want it to perform better. And a lot of people will say that you need the steering damper because it prevents speed wobbles. But if you're a proficient scooter rider and you've been doing this, you know, you know your way around the block, you don't need a steering damper. My steering damper is more or less off. It's on the lowest setting right now. But everyone will say that you need steering dampers to prevent steering or speed wobbles, but if you know your way around a scooter you're not going to get speed wobble you know to lean back and crouch down if you start wobbling and it pretty much cancels out the wobbles but a lot of people ride really far forward so they have a lot of weight over the front tire and they make kind of erratic movements because they're new to scootering and that's what's going to induce speed wobbles but if you lean back if you crouch down and you just make smooth controlled movements in the steering you're not going to get speed wobble and i think it just has to do with how far you're willing to push the scooter into the performance zone, uh, given your skill level. If you can, you can easily push yourself out of your skill set, especially on a high-speed scooter like this. And in those situations, you're gonna probably get wobbles if you don't know what you're doing. But if you've been riding scooters around for tens of thousands of miles, like I have, it's it's kind of hard to get speed wobbles. And when you do, you just crouch down and lean back, and they cancel out. Holy smokes, this battery is almost dead already. We have one bar. I guess I need to go home now? Yeah, like I was saying, the cold weather just crushes these batteries. This is crazy. Seriously? I've got one bar out of five? This Lamborghini in front of me. It sounds like a diesel. It's got such a derpy exhaust on it. I don't know about you guys, but if I had the money to buy a Lambo, I would not buy that one in front of me. That thing looks like an ugly trash compactor. It sounds like one too. 
There's a little teal Tesla up there too. Oh, a Tesla, a Tesla, and a Lambo. Yeah, welcome to Bellevue. It's getting kind of dark. And I'm not too worried about my ability to see, but I would like cars to see me. So I'm gonna turn on my PEV fire lights here. Let's take this corner here. We can take this at pretty high speed with the V-sets. I mean with the PMTs. Oh, we got gravel on the road. Whew. All right, let's put, let's bust into some neighborhoods up here and I'll show you what these PMTs can do. Turn on my turn signal. I don't know if anyone will see it, but we can turn. Sorry, I make sound effects when I'm having fun. Yeah, these PMTs, you can just rip to the left, rip to the right. I could actually feel the tires bending and gripping. Wow. You can just put probably like twice as many Gs on these tires when you feel comfortable with it. Yeah, if I had a track, if I was racing around a track, I would demand these tires over the stock ones. There's, it's really, when you're ripping on it like that, uh, yeah, PMTs are night and day. But it's not until you start doing crazy, stupid, fast turns like that that you really will ever even notice them. So nice. It feels like the scooter is stuck to the road with like glue. All right, you guys, that's going to do it for my short video today on the two upgrades I recommend. Obviously, the PMT tires if you're a crazy rider like me. Suspension if you've got over 500 miles on the scooter. And if you just like to send your scooter way too hard, but you're not fully up to skill yet, go ahead and grab yourself a steering damper. That would be uh, upgrade number three. You know, not required, but you can do it. And an upgrade I recommend for every scooter, number four, the fire lights right here. Bing, bang, boom. Two of the brightest, most waterproof, highest discharge flashlights you can get specifically designed for e-scooters and e-bikes at pevfirelight.com thanks again to wired rides for sending me the pmts for review i had a lot of fun ripping around on them and i'm sure i will for another however many miles till the tread wears out <laughs>